All right, guys, it's Adrian here. So I'm going to be going over how to mix vocals for beginners. I'm going to be going over everything in this video from EQing it, compressing it, adding effects such as reverb, and getting your vocal to sit right in the mix. So first of all, make sure you have a lead vocal track, the one you just record. Got it right here. This one I'm going to be working on, lead box two. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go in the mix window here in Pro Tools. We're going to leave the fade all the way down and we're going to bring it up just until you hear it start to take over everything inside the mix. As you hear it starts to sit on top of everything else. Then we're going to add what we need, what we think we need in our head to enhance it and to get it to sound consistent and to be clear and present at all times. So let's play the track and let's adjust our volume. Play it one more time. What you want to hear is it kind of sits somewhere around the snare drum. Okay, so around there was pretty good. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to load up an EQ plugin. And just for purposes, I'm just going to use um, some stock plugins. So here we got the Pro Tools 7 band EQ. And first of all, what I'm going to do is apply a high pass filter. Now, what this is, is going to do is it's going to engage it. Um, so, what's this going to do is it, it's depending on the frequency that I set it to, it's going to remove everything below it. So if I set it to 90 hertz, that means that everything below 90 hertz here will be removed. Eight well, it won't exactly be removed, but it'll be 18 dB quieter than everything else here, depending on this octave. So it really, it's a lot lower and it'll be quite inaudible in the mix. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring it up in the context of the mix and when I start to hear that the vocal thins out, I'm gonna back it off. So we'll play it again. So around there was good. You, you heard when I went up to a lot higher, like around 250, it was just too much. Usually around and anywhere from 90 to 130 dB is kind of sweet spot you want to find. Okay. And the next thing I want to try and do is add some brightness because some of the words were getting lost inside the mix. So this would really add some more air and some more sibilance to the vocal and make it sit, sit on top of everything else. Okay, so here when I took it away, it started to sound a lot duller. So a good frequency I like to begin with is eight kilohertz. And I'll let you hear what that sounds like. Okay, 
You can hear that the volume is starting to get a lot louder. So later we will back that off on this output control. But that's starting to add some nice brightness. The next thing I want to try and find for is a high mid frequency. And I'm going to add a little bit of that. Okay, so around 4K here can be quite sensitive in the ear, but it can really make your vocal pop. It can really make it stand forward. So you don't want to go too drastic here. So you only went half a decibel, 1.5 dB. If you go a lot more higher, it'll start to sound a bit harsh and piercing and will make everything sound too loud. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is make sure I level match because now we've added a lots of volume by doing these EQ moves. So we're going to make sure that output here is the same coming as our input. So we go back and play it. Okay, so that sort of seemed about right. Here when I bypassed the plug-in that the volume was the same, but now it just sounds a bit brighter and clearer. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to compress the vocal. By compressing it, we're going to reduce its amount of dynamic range. So that way we can make the volume sound more consistent throughout. So I'm going to load up, compress the plug-in. And again, I'm just going to use the dynamic free compressor. Okay, now we're going to look at this waveform. And what a compressor is going to do is it's going to turn down the loudest peaks and bring up the quieter ones. So we need to look at our waveform. And we can see the loudest peaks here. So this is what we call transients in audio. Transients are the initial sound beginning. So this will be the attack of the sound. And as we come up to here, we have the sustain. And then our release is this tail at the end. So you can see our quieter parts are here. This is coming in this vocal. And as it's being dying off here. So what we want to do is we want to find this part here, the sound. And we want to turn it down. So we use our attack control all the way here is the fastest and this is the slowest. So what this attack is going to do is determine where we set it. It's going to look at this waveform and in time it's going to, we want, it's going to find the part of the audio and it's going to grab it and it's going to turn it down. So we have to set this. So where it hits the loudest part, it will find it and it will compress it and then it will turn it down. And so as you can see, that the loudest point of this audio happens quite long. So what we want to do is set a medium to slow attack time for the compressor to begin its compression. And then with this release control, we want to set it pretty quickly so that way it can find where it needs to compress with the attack and then the release will back off the compression straight away. And then we'll find the next spot and then it'll back it off. So if you think of it like a fader, for every time that the volume is too loud, you would turn it down quickly 
and then when it's softer, it will go back to its original volume. Okay, so then the next moves we have to look at is this ratio. Now the ratio means how hard the compressor is going to work. So for three to one ratio, it means that for every three dB that the level goes over the threshold, it will let one dB go through. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep a ratio of 3 dB, actually we go 4 dB, and we'll set this threshold until we can start seeing some gain reduction. And we'll play that in context of the song. So as you can see there, as I was playing it, I was adjusting the attack controls so that way I could find the right spot for it to pass through. So I could find the right spot for the compressor to kick in. And then I was adjusting the threshold so that we were getting maximum 6 dB of gain reduction here. This is a gain reduction meter. We're getting maximum 6 dB. Okay, so then the next part we have to do is bring the gain up so that way we can level match again. Okay, now we got a good vocal level. It's nice and clear. What we're going to do is add some effects. So what I want to do is add a reverb. I'm going to go to my sends. And I'm going to do a simple way. I'm just going to go new track. And I'm going to call it reverb. As you can see here, it's making a stereo auxiliary track called reverb. And if you hit command on a Mac and solo, we'll solo safe it. So that way when we listen to the vocal in solo, it's going to have the reverb on it as well. In this reverb track, we're going to load up a reverb. And I'm just going to use Dverb. Is, you're just going to use stock plugins. Um, and we're going to turn this gain back to zero. And what type of reverb we want to try and simulate. As this a rock song, I'm going to use a plate reverb. Very famous for rock vocals. And I'm going to change this decay time to something that's quite musical. So this is quite a, a long decay time. It's 1.6 seconds. Um, and long decay times are quite good for kind of slow, soft songs. Um, faster the song, you kind of want gradu to graduate between a shorter decay time. Although it also affects how much level you go in, you um, put into the reverb. So, I'm going to start a bit short. I'm going to start 1.4. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this level coming in. And I'm slowly going to bring it down until it starts to sound right. And then we're going to change the reverb settings after. Let's go play the track. So there you go.
Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Hopefully you can take something away from it. Uh, s subscribe to this channel. If you want to see more mixing tutorials, I post them every week. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Cheers.